In this short video, I'm going to talk about capillary action, sometimes called capillary motion. Capillary action is the process in which liquid flows in a narrow space without assistance of or even in opposition to any external forces such as gravity. Capillary action occurs naturally in soil because soil is a porous media and there is a lot of teeny tiny narrow space between soil particles. Let's do a quick experiment together to observe capillary action. Let me show you the experiment. So in this experiment, what we need is a cup. I have a plastic cup over here. As you can see, I have cut the bottom of the cup. So this is bottomless. And here is the front of it. Perfect. So we need a tray, something like this. We need some sand over here. And also we need some water that I put in this graduated cylinder. So next thing that you need to do, you need to carefully take the sand and use it to fill, carefully fill out the inside of this cup that you have. Once the cup is full of sand, next you need to pour water inside your tray. What you need to observe is the level of water in the soil and you will be seeing that water is going to rise up because of the capillary action that we just learned about. Let's do this. As you can see over here, level water is rising up in the sand slowly but surely the reason for this is capillary action there are lots of pores inside the pile of soil that we have over here and because these pores are very small water rises up in the sand as you can see the level is going higher and higher and higher All right, let's take a look at an example. I have a container and there is water in this container. Then I insert a circular straw with a diameter of D into the container. Because the straw is narrow, water within the straw is gonna rise. And this is exaggerated, but the water within the straw is gonna rise a little bit. And it's gonna rise to this level, delta H. I'm gonna find delta H mathematically. I wanna, I wanna see if I can write an equation mathematically to find delta H. All right, so I'm gonna define my system within this area, which is inside the straw. All right, this system is in equilibrium, right? So if I wanna show you the summation of all the forces in Y direction should be equal to zero. All right, what are the forces in Y direction? Well, the obvious one is gonna be W. This is W, the weight of this, uh, cylindrical water and then I have surface tension if you don't know what surface tension is watch the previous video about surface tension I'm gonna link it right above here in the video as well so surface tension would be this F over here right and I can write this in terms of X and Y so this would be the Y and this would be the X component of that perfect so this is F Y and F Y all right, now let's write this. So in y direction, we have w, which has a negative sign because it's downward, and then plus fy, this is going to be equal to zero. So fy is going to be equal to w. Now let's talk about fy. fy is the y component of surface tension. And we know that the force due to surface tension is equal to sigma times L. Sigma is surface tension, and you can find the value of surface tension from your textbook, depending on the temperature that you have over here. And L is the length of contact of water with your straw over here. So if I'll take a look at this straw from this direction, from um, aerial direction, 
it would be something like this. Okay, now and water is inside this. Let me show it to you. And the contact between water and the straw is like this because this is full with water, right? So if I ask you what is the length of contact between water and the straw, you're going to say that this length of contact is what? Is the circumference of this circle. And I know that the diameter is D, so P or the circumference of uh, the circle would be pi times D or diameter. All right, so this is L. Now, I also know that Fy is equal to F times cosine of theta. And theta is this angle over here. This is theta. But I'm going to assume that this theta is very, very small, very, very small. And this is a correct assumption for water. So cosine of theta, if theta is very small, would be 1. So F and Fy are equal to each other. Perfect. Now, putting this over here, it would be sigma times, instead of L, I'm going to write pi times D. And W is the weight of this cylinder this cylinder, which is filled with water. And I know that weight, according to a specific weight, is going to be weight divided by volume. What is the volume of that cylinder? The volume of cylinder is the cross-sectional area times delta H. So it would be delta H times cross-sectional area of the cylinder, which would be cross-sectional area of this. And it would be pi divided by 4, diameter to the power 2. So, all right, now I have this. I can write down the value of W, which is gamma of W, specific weight, times, um, um, times volume. Okay, so specific weight times volume is delta H, pi divided by 4, times diameter to the power 2. All right, um, we can uh, simplify this. This pi is going to be canceled out with this one. This diameter is going to be canceled out with the power of the O's over here. Now I can write delta H. For sigma, 4 comes over here, divided by gamma of W times D. All right, so this is the equation that you can use to figure out delta H or the height that water rises within the straw.